Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting episode, another edition of A Week in Geekdom here on YouTube, and today we are going to talk about Justice League Dark. Yeah, I finally gave this a go. Actually, I've, I've read it for a while now, but uh, I just now got to this, and it is pretty freaking interesting. If you are not aware of what the Justice League Dark book is, basically it is it's sort of like the supernatural division of the Justice League. Uh, it started back in the New 52 when they constructed this team to handle supernatural threats and villains and all that fun stuff. Stuff. And it was one of my favorite books from the New 52 era. I love the concept of uh, getting together all these superheroes to fight magical threats and, and whatnot because magic can be really diverse. It, it isn't necessarily like a super strong bad guy. It can be like this weak looking dude uh, like Clarion, for example. He looks super wimpy, but he's actually super powerful. I love that about magic. And it changes up the dynamic of uh, how you construct your team and the plot and all that stuff. Unfortunately, with the New 52 version of Justice League Dark, it uh, while the concept and execution was fine, it never got to the heights I wanted it to be. Especially when it crossed over with, uh, I believe, Trinity War and then the Forever Evil stuff, which made the uh, Blight series. And uh, yeah, different artistic changes and writing changes. It just was an uneven book with a stellar concept, in my honest opinion. Now with Rebirth, we have a second opportunity to do something really cool with this uh, team. And boy, in my opinion, do they deliver. So required reads. Okay, if you want to start reading Justice League Dark, uh, you are okay for the most part, but however, I would suggest picking up a DC Metal, the event that preceded this. Uh, the Metal event sets everything in motion as to why there's so many new uh, teams uh, in the Rebirth era. There are a couple of chapters that you need to know as well, which is uh, Justice League you No know, Justice. This was sort of the prelude to everything that's happening. Uh, post metal it was four issues and it sets up the status quo for what scott snyder did with the dc universe as a whole with you know on an epic grand scale the story of course teams up an awesome eclectic roster of dc staples you've got wonder woman which uh it, right there one of my favorite characters actually i should just tell you wonder woman swamp thing and zatanna are in my personal top 10 list of favorite uh, DC comic book characters. So right out of the gate, I'm sold on this book. I am really excited about this roster. Now you've got Detective Chimp, which is a strange addition, but if you like magical stories in the DC universe, it makes sense that he would be there because he is linked to so much of the... Uh, underworld and magical scene and it's plus it's really fun to have an anthropomorphic animal in there uh chimp talking uh, uh with all these guys and you know trading uh, uh quips and and saving the day but the strangest addition to this team right there is man bat yeah that i think everybody that caught everybody off guard and i love the idea because if, if you look at this roster right here on the cover, it is Manbat that provides sort of this link between the human side and science into the magical uh, paranormal side when it comes to the DC Universe. So I thought that was a really smart and clever introduction, plus the way that uh, James Tinian writes uh, Manbat, it's almost... Uh, you sort of feel empathy, you sort of feel for this guy because he is in this state of, when you see him, he's in this mid-stage transformation, so he's sort of like this half, uh, well, technically his name is Manbat, I do know that, but sort of like this half-morphed state, and you sort of go like, aw, Manbat, 
but he's actually pretty terrifying if you think about it. Uh, so, uh, yeah, without spoiling too much, he is on the team for a very specific reason. And it is that Diana is assembling this uh, new iteration of Justice League Dark to combat a very uh, specific crisis. Magic has been broken and it is being consumed and uh, on the verge of extinction. Uh, the story begins literally with Zatanna doing a magic show and it fails horribly and the magic attacks the crowd and so Diana arrives to defeat this monster thing and of course to help Zatanna and propose the idea of hey we should all team up and let's see what is happening and how we can save the world from extinction and what i really loved about it was that um zatanna and all the other uh mystic heroes like your uh constantine or uh jason blood uh morgan lefay uh clarion all these wonderful characters they're like maybe we should team up and uh jason of course uh, aka etrigan uh, no, uh, these uh, Justice Leaguers and world uh, heroes, they don't, they don't mix with us and they're outsiders and we do things our way in the shadows. So I thought that was pretty cool that, uh, you know, even though there is this crisis, you still have uh, a, a way that these characters behave and stay true to themselves. They're not suddenly going to go out and get uh, Batman and Superman to help out. They, they do things their own way totally different from the Justice League or the Teen Titans, etc. And of course, the character of Wonder Woman, she's so famous worldwide uh, and in real life that you even I start to think about it and I'm telling myself like, yeah, her origin is very magical, but all of these characters do not consider her a part of that community. So I thought that was a pretty interesting way to have this clash of ideologies between superheroes and villains, because not all the mystic heroes are technically heroes. Also, I have to give big props before I forget. Alvaro Martinez Bueno, Raul Fernandez, Brad Anderson, you know, the artistic side of this book is fantastic. It really sets the mood. And when things get creepy, they get creepy. I have to give props to Tinion for having uh, the the bravery to do a... It's more like an action horror book, but still it has some horror elements to it. Especially when you see uh, all the victims of... Um, this incoming threat, which I won't spoil, uh, but when you see the victims and sort of like this body horror imagery starts to surface that I, I, I loved it. <laughs> it was creepy and it was awesome. And I really enjoyed uh, the usage of shadows. When you start reading the book, Satana's doing a show, so there's minimal lighting. When she's talking in the middle of the road, and uh, John Constantine shows up, and all you see is a black panel, and all of a sudden, this, you know, the cigarette light pops up, and you just see the vague outline of his face. It has that horror vibe and that aesthetic from uh, 70s and 80s, uh, you know, paranormal movies and all that stuff. So I really liked that attention to detail. Of course, it's magic based, so it does get wild and crazy when characters like Detective Chimp and Swamp Thing jump into the mix. Swamp Thing, you know, being the protector of the green and all that stuff. And there are so many fantastical elements that happen that it's just a visual treat, in my honest opinion, uh, with a character like him, you know, being so green and tall and pretty mighty. Also, uh, I love the hair-beard combo. Uh, I know a lot of people like to make this joke, but he really does look like a... Uh, a version of Alan Moore, which is uh, strangely epic and awesome. I really enjoyed that. I love that. The book is divided into two separate story arcs, although they're technically all related. It's one big story. But the first three issues, they set everything up in a awesome manner. And there is, when you do get to see the main bad guy, that was an awesome reveal and super creepy, might I add. But those first three issues, they don't miss a beat. They're really uh, fast paced and interesting. There's this intrigue that keeps building throughout those three issues with so many cool reveals, so many explorations, and just creepy, wonderful, uh, horrific sides of the DC universe that if you are not into this 
uh, genre you might not see coming. If this is your first time dipping your toes into the magical side of DC Comics, you're going to be like, okay, that's interesting. There's a part in this book that relates to Wonder Woman's origin uh, and her as a kid that I thought was spectacular. And I would have read a whole comic book based on that. But you're in luck because we do have with us Wonder Woman and Justice League Dark, The Witching Hour. You don't technically need to read it, but I would read it anyways because it's an awesome story. And even though it's not part of this video review, it does take place right in the middle of Justice League Dark after uh, issue three. And it explains uh, why in issue, what was it, issue five of Justice League Dark, certain characters are talking about things relating to wonder woman and the status quo so yeah do pick up the witching hour uh you're you're gonna like it don't worry about it it's fun and and like i was mentioning exploring that side of diana is awesome i i loved it so much just as like dark guys fantastic i love this team so much and i love like i said the team dynamic it's strange and it's wacky but that's the whole point because it is supposed to be uh creepy and mysterious and um i love it superheroes and horror storytelling are two things i really enjoy and if you're able to pull it off it's going to be a winner and i do think uh james tinian has done a fantastic job of uh rebooting if you will the justice league dark uh, uh, franchise or book or however you want to say it into something exciting fun and accessible to readers if you want something a little bit spookier a little bit edgier and uh more in your face with crazy fantastic visuals about uh horror and so many cool characters that i'd love that i cannot talk about because i would be spoiling some things if you know if you have some idea of what i'm referring to then yeah, I love that part. And the villains are interesting. Uh, it, I, I fear that they might get a little generic, uh, but for the most part, I love the concept and the idea behind what is happening. And of course, like, you know, magic existed before humans and now uh, it's coming back to haunt everybody because of certain events and characters and the shift in the status quo is going to be really interesting uh, going forward. I hope that it builds up to this grand epic story that I am itching uh, to read when it comes to magic characters. Plus, you know, any book with Zatanna is A-OK -okay by me. Guys, have you read Justice League Dark? Let me know in the comment section down below. Do you prefer the New 52 version? Do you like what's happening with Justice League Dark um, post-rebirth and all that stuff? Uh, let me know, yeah, in the comments section. Thank you, everybody, for liking, commenting, and subscribing to We Can Geek Them. As always, follow me on your favorite social media platform. You can talk to me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that fun stuff. I've got to go. I have more stuff to read, play, view, and just geek out over. So I will catch all of you on our next episode.